Here we go. Slowly we support him. I'm okay. Let's go to the bus. Careful. Okay, over here. <laughs> Thank you. We're glad to welcome you in Kazakhstan. We're glad you had a successful landing. Congratulations on work successfully done. Let's wish to the crew good health and successful trip back home. There is a tradition. We give our national clothing to the crew members. A dombra, a Kazakhstan traditional musical instrument. And the best candy in the world from Karaganda with the crew photograph. We will definitely play this instrument. In my turn, on behalf of the management, I would like to congratulate you on the successful completion of flight and return to the ground, return to Earth in Kazakhstan. Uh, we have some small traditional souvenirs we would like to present to you as gifts. Uh, here's the descent module on the back and the front has the um, picture of the cosmonaut. These are traditional Russian nesting dolls. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. From the Air Force, uh, congratulations. Frank Mustrakio, welcome home. Uh, an amazing six months aboard the International Space Station. I was struck uh, by the fact that um, four trips to the station during your career, one long duration flight obviously, this one. You watched this station grow and mature over the course of your whole career practically. What were your thoughts when you and your crewmates uh, departed uh, in your Soyuz vehicle, headed back to Earth and took a look back at what had been your home for the past six months? Well, looking back at the expedition overall, <clears throat> excuse me, I feel like we accomplished a lot of things. We did a lot of science. We did several EVAs and spacewalks to, uh, to re repair the space station, and of course we had a couple of visiting vehicles while we were there. So I think we accomplished everything the program asked us to do and maybe a little bit more, so I felt good about it. The ride downhill on Soyuz, uh, everybody calls it the e-ticket at Disneyland. Uh, what were your thoughts? What was the most thrilling part of it all? Yeah, it's uh, I, uh, the words in my mind were wild ride, you know, and it was wild. Uh, first of all, just getting yourself as tight as you can in that seat is a challenge. And then uh, once the uh, once you go through entry, pulling about five Gs, that wasn't actually too bad. But then it really starts when the parachute deployment sequence starts, and you get tossed around quite a bit. And then of course the uh, the final impact with the good old planet Earth 
it was a lot harder than I expected it to be, but I feel great. I felt good through the whole thing. I felt great after landing, and it was uh, everything worked out perfectly. Your thoughts, your impressions as you uh, took a breath of fresh air for the first time in six months and uh, saw all this crowd around you and smelled the earth, uh, some of the sensory thoughts that went through your mind. Yeah, uh, first of all, the, the cold air, the, the cool air coming in was fantastic. You know, you breathe the uh, space station air, which is, is very clean, of course, but it's nothing like uh, the air we have here on Earth, and so that was the first impression. Uh, you know, the other thing I was thinking <clears throat> before we landed, I was thinking, well, there has to be uh, about a hundred different miracles have to happen between undocking and landing, and uh, every one of them worked perfectly, and uh, I, I was just overjoyed to be on the ground, and, and when they opened up the hatch, I was very, very happy. Rick, when you have an opportunity uh, weeks or months from now to look back and think about what you've accomplished during this particular flight and all the, the major milestones of Expedition 38 and 39, what do you think, uh, if you were writing the legacy of this pair of increments, would be uh, uh, outstanding in your mind? Well, of course, we had the, uh, the spacewalks. Those are always uh, very dramatic and uh, very important, of course. The visiting vehicles, of course, we had a, one of the Cygnus and a SpaceX. But I tell you, I think uh, after SpaceX arrived, and it was after Cygnus and SpaceX arrived, it's amazing the amount of science that we do up there. And that's when really, uh, it's, that's when the fun begins, in my opinion. That's when we start to get out these really good experiments, and we work on them for a few days, and we collect the samples, and then pack them up and get them ready to return to Earth. And those were the days that I enjoyed the most, where we're really doing a lot of science, because that's the reason we're up there. And the international flavor of, uh, of your crew and your crewmates and the close bond that you struck with them uh, offer a few thoughts about what the International Space Station means in terms of uh, a global village up in orbit. Yeah, of course, all my crewmates were great. We got along fantastic. And I always tell folks, you know, yeah, even though we had uh, astronauts from Japan and the United States and we had cosmonauts from Russia, I don't look at those at the, as my crewmates as from being from Russia or from Japan or from different places. I look at them as just my friends and my crewmates. And that's a great way to, in, in any uh, endeavor, I think that's a great way to think about folks as just as, as friends and, and as, as people. Welcome home, Rick. Thank Thanks you, very much. Thanks.